So today's lecture, we'll start with Milton, John Milton's Comus, his poem written in the 1630s, John Milton, Puritan poet, and he writes a, a poem about a young lady who is lost in the woods and uh, Comus, the g god of nighttime ribaldry, uh, c captures her, and enchants her, and places her at a banquet table, and she's stuck to her ch chair, and he's seducing her with a physical c comforts, and, uh, and, and, and well, let's just listen to what C Comus says to the lady. Let's see if we can get this so we're reading it properly. Here we go. So Comus says, See, here be all the pleasures that fancy can beget on your on youthful thoughts when the fresh blood grows lively and returns brisk as the April buds in primrose season. Why should you be so cruel t to yourself? and to those dainty limbs which nature lent for gentle usage and soft delicacy. And uh, the, the lady responds, uh, not even arguing with him, by saying this, Thou hast nor ear nor soul to apprehend the sublime notion and high mystery that must be uttered to unfold the sage and serious doctrine of virginity. So, uh, to John Milton, the Puritan, uh, uh, the sage and serious doctrine of virginity is not the same as the old Roman Catholic virtue of chastity. For him, uh, chastity, for well, back up, chastity in the olden times was only things that nuns and monks and priests could hope to attain. But uh, the chastity that John Milton is thinking about is not giving up sex, but containing sex within the boundaries of m marriage. So uh, f fast forward, if you will, to 1949. My mother is about to begin, or is actually beginning uh, college, uh, Balls Park uh, Training College, uh, for women, by the way, um, and she becomes, I think in her second year, the head girl. Now, uh, her father did not want her to go to college. He thought that college was not for women, and that women should just get, get married, but my mother uh, didn't. And so she went to college, and she becomes, in fact, the head girl. Now, the head girl is a very important position in b British schools. And my mother gets, as part of her, her, her p position, she gets a cottage. Everyone else is living in the dorms, and she gets to live in the cottage. Well, one evening, uh, she and her friends had invited some young men to come and have tea and listen to the phonograph. Well, a girl who was not part of that party, uh, a jealous one, uh, f figures out that mom is having these boys after curfew has already finished and runs to the administration. Well, the administration uh, finds this out, and, and my mother is brought before the troops, and she's the but things are ripped from her, and she's dr dr drummed out. Now, I don't think it was that bad, but she was, in fact, uh, she lost her, the head girl ship. Um, she said she was allowed to stay in the cottage t until end of term, but it was one of the greatest embarrassments, one of the greatest uh, feelings of guilt that she had, uh, she says, her greatest humiliation. Now, uh, she's 25 years old n now. And my mother goes to the Bahamas with her fiancé, not, not my f father, by the way, this is a fiancé before my f father. And when she goes to the Bahamas with her fiancé, they have no chaperone, and yet, and yet they do not have sex. Now this uh, 
comes as a great surprise to the grandchildren who my mother tells this story to the grandchildren, just how she rolled. And they can't believe it. But the answer is, British women, young women of the 1930s and 40s, did not have sex before m m m marriage. Now, if you say, well, that's not true, Mr. Horner, of course it's not true. Dorothy L. Sayers, by the way, did have sex and got pregnant, and they had to hide her away and have a b baby secretly. Come on, you've seen Downton Abbey. You know how this works. But for my mother, for the bourgeois middle class of the 1930s and 40s, the whole society, the whole bourgeois, uh, society, that was the belief. Now, it wasn't particularly religious for my m mother. My mother was not particularly religious. She becomes an evangelical Christian later in life. In fact, late 1960s, early 1970s, both my mother and my father become evangelical Christians and go to church and become very strong evangelical Christians. And now my mother has a biblical reason, whether it's true or not, we don't care, but she has a reason that she would teach her ch children. Now this is my question. Can someone teach their children, their, can evangelicals teach their children that you should not have sex before m marriage? Can they, uh, a community of Christians, evangelical Christians, say this is uh, what we believe and we don't want to have a pastor who, who doesn't believe this. We don't want a pastor who's uh, living with uh, his girlfriend. We don't want a Sunday school teacher like that. We don't even want a school teacher at our evangelical Christian school to do that. Now, are people watching you all the time? The answer is no. But if you're a school teacher, let's say at Second Baptist, can I urge you, don't do stand-up where you talk about having sex with your girlfriend. That's not, not going to fly. And the question is, can you do this? Can you as a community believe this and say, this is what we believe? We're not telling everyone to believe this. In fact, Please come to our church. You don't have to believe. You don't have to do this. You can have a girlfriend and come to our ch church. We're not saying you can't. We're just saying it's wrong. And at some point we would like to d d d help you understand that's wrong and either m marry her or, or, or you know, stop ha ha living with her or, or not. Or you can come to our church the whole time, but you c can't come into positions of leadership. Now, the problem is with the rainbow flag, and this is why I don't fly the rainbow flag. The rainbow flag, to me, means LGBTQ+, and that plus is saying, I think, that sex and gender is something that autonomous individuals will decide. It is not up to families or communities or a society to decide these things. This is individuals decide how they want to pursue happiness. And if you say, well, Mr. Horn, I think you're m making that up. Well, let me read to you something from the APA. Now, you all, if you had my class a long time ago, know what the APA, that's what we used to use, our style guide, that's what uh, you use in English and psychiatry and sociology uh, if you've taken those classes. I now use, the, or I did use the Chicago Manual of Style we converted. But the uh, American Psychological Association has a task force, and I want you to read this. The APA Consensual Non-Monogamy Task Force. The task force on consensual non-monogamy promotes awareness and inclusivity. Did you hear that? Inclusivity. And inclusivity about consensual non-monogamy and diverse expressions of intimate relationships. These include, but are not limited to, people who practice polyamory, open relationships, swinging, relationship anarchy, and other types of ethical 
non-monogamous relationships. Now, I'm sorry, but who decides whether something is ethical? To the evangelical Christian, the only kind of sex you can have is between a man and a woman inside of marriage. Uh, we'll, we'll get to, to uh, uh, gays and lesbians and bisexuals in the next lecture. So just ho hold on. Just let's just say in marriage, the only place you can have sex is in marriage. And so if you're a swinger, well, we're not going to let you teach Sunday school, that's for sure. And of course, if you swing quietly in the privacy of your own home, and in fact, I, I have yet to meet a evangelical Christian who says government should tell people what kind of sex they should have in the privacy of their own home amongst consensual adults, of course. And the answer is, of course, g government should t t tell us that. Are you kidding? Who would think that? And I, by the way, uh, not evangelicals, but can I read to you? Griswold versus Connecticut. This is in 1965. And this is the opinion. This is not the dissenting opinion. Justice Goldberg with Warren and Brenner concurring say, even though we will not allow this law that it was a contraception law. Listen to what they say. This is f fascinating. It should be said of the court's holding today that it in no way interferes with a state's proper, did you hear that, proper regulation of sexual promiscuity or misconduct. In 1965, uh, Americans understood that the state could stop people from uh, being promiscuous or, or, or having sexual misconduct. That's not true today. It's not true among the evangelical crowd. We don't want laws against adultery. We don't want laws against having people having sex in, in the privacy of their own home. Now, that's d d different from, you know, putting it in uh, my face. You can't come and swing and accept, uh, expect to be a t teacher at my school. Of course, I, uh, I don't mind if you're a carpenter. Uh, don't, but don't be talking about your swinging when you're making ca cabinets for me, please. Or, or, or do, and I'll t tell you why I, I don't think that that's... So we will continue this discussion uh, in the next lecture when we talk about uh, lesbians, g gays, uh, and, and, and bisexuals. And then the one after that is transgenders.